Monday night, like many of you, I'm sure, uh, I watched the presidential debate. Maybe unlike many of you, I watched it with a big group of priests. There's certainly been a lot of talk leading up to the presidential election. I've heard people uh, many times in many ways express their concerns and people from every walk of life. Looking at the candidates, a lot of people are left wondering, how did we get here? What has the world come to that this is our choice? And where do we go from here? And the readings that we hear this week give us great insight into these questions. In the first reading, we hear very wise words from the prophet Habakkuk. And we might feel the same way that he did. All of the crazy things happening in the world around us, we might be tempted to cry out just like him. How long, O Lord, is this going to last? How long will all of this continue? How long until the end of time when you come back and you make all things new? We certainly may be tempted to cry out in the same way, but there's a key difference between us and the prophet. Right? Habakkuk was waiting for the Messiah. He still lived in the time when they were looking forward to fulfillment of God's promises. Right? It hadn't happened yet. We, on the other hand, live in the time after Christ. Right? We know that God does, in fact, follow through on his promises and give us a Savior. And we know the Savior. Right? We know Christ. We know that he's come, that he's brought salvation. And we are waiting, not for him to come a first time, but we're waiting for his return. And we wait for his return in hope, knowing that God wins in the end, right? Knowing that the victory is already ours. The war is won, but small little battles still continue to rage on until the Lord returns. The book of Revelation tells us that the devil has come down to you in great fury, for he knows he has but a short time. I didn't think about it until after I finished writing my homily early, early this week, right? Uh, but I was thinking about it, and that happens in a regular war, right? It's very obvious that one side has lost. There's still some little battles that are going on, and, and bad things still happen. Right, we know the outcome of the war. We know that Christ is victorious. The question for us is, will we find ourselves on the winning side? Will we find ourselves with Christ. We're called to fight along Christ until he returns. And that's what Paul is reminding Timothy of. That's what he's reminding us of in that second reading that we heard today when he says, Stir into a flame the gift of faith that you have. God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but one of power and love and self-control. So we don't just sit back and say that things are terrible, right? Oh, everything's awful. God must not care about us. No. Is it God that doesn't care, or is it we who don't care? There are enough Catholics in this country to be able to influence every major election, but we don't do it. Why not? We don't do it because we don't stick to our principles. We don't follow the teachings of the church, especially in those key areas, those critical issues regarding life and sexuality and marriage and many others. We can't just sit back and watch as things continue to get worse. We've done that for far too long. No, we were not given a spirit of cowardice, but one of power and love and self-control, St. Paul tells us. We're called to be active and to promote the gospel in all that we do, even in our political, our civic responsibilities. And Paul urges us not to be ashamed of our testimony to the Lord, not to be ashamed of our faith. In the back of our minds, as we hear this, we should think of Christ's words, right? Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my Heavenly Father. 
We cannot separate our spiritual lives from the rest of our life. It can't be just this little box that we put aside and take care of for an hour on the weekend. It has to be part of who we are. We cannot deny Christ. The gospel helps us to see an answer to that question, where do we go from here? We ought to make the cry of the apostles at the beginning of the gospel our cry. Lord, increase our faith. And this cry isn't just a cry of desperation. Right? I have nothing left to do. I might as well just cry out to God. Right? It's our battle cry. It's what we should be inspired by. Lord, increase our faith so that we can be bold in proclaiming you. Lord, increase our faith so that we can bring you into the world. Lord, increase our faith so that this world that is full of hatred and violence may come to know you and come to know love and peace. Lord, increase our faith so that we can be true to your teachings handed down to us through your church in all that we do. I remember when I was in my last year of seminary, uh, some of the guys would be ordained before our academic year was over. So they would go fly home, be ordained, and come back and take exams, which sounds like a horrible, horrible idea to me, but they would do it. So one of my classmates went home, uh, was ordained a priest, and came back, and one of the first days he was back, he was celebrating Mass for some sisters that lived uh, on our campus. And he was preaching on the solemnity of the Ascension, right? We celebrate Christ uh, ascending into heaven. And the point of his homily was that now that Jesus has ascended into heaven, right, his body, that sort of looks like this, right? Not that he looks like this, but you know what I mean. His body is no longer on earth. Right? We have the Eucharist, certainly, but that he reign, remains here bodily also in us, right? in you and in me. That we're called to be his hands, we're called to be his feet, we're called to be his mouth, right? doing his work on earth. And so when we pray that prayer, Lord, increase our faith, we're really praying, Lord, give me the grace, give me the strength that I need to be your presence in the world. Help me to live my faith boldly so that the world can come to know you through me. And so though many people are concerned, we're reminded today by Christ that if we have even the smallest bit of faith, the size of a tiny seed, we can uproot trees and have them planted in the seed. Now that doesn't sound like a very practical uh, skill or talent to have. But he's trying to get across the point that our faith matters and our faith can do something. So no matter how bad things may appear or we may view things, we don't lose hope. We keep looking forward to the second coming of Christ, which the church reminds us of every time we come to Mass. Right after the Eucharistic prayer, during the Eucharistic prayer, just after the consecration, I will pray these words. Therefore, O Lord, we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. So as we wait for Christ to return, we pray. As we wait for Christ to return, we pray for the strength to be bold in our faith. To be inspired by that spirit of power and love and self-control that has been given to us. And as we await the return of Christ, we pray that inspired by God, we may live our faith boldly and not compromise our moral values that have been handed on to us through Christ and his church. Amen.